Uh, I'm not a watercolourist. Those people doing watercolours, you'll know so much more about watercolour paper than I do. Uh, sometimes I use watercolour paper. Uh, I quite like using watercolour papers, but not terribly traditionally. Uh, this was a piece of watercolour paper that I used an acrylic paste on and then flooded it with watercolour paper. And this has been glued to a panel, okay? Uh, and it's been sealed with uh, a polymer. So I can now work on that, continue on that, leave it. I haven't decided yet. Uh, so that's how I would use a watercolour paper if I wanted the absorbency. If I wanted to use watercolour paper to paint on with acrylics or oils, I would need to seal it with a gesso, okay? So it doesn't necessarily soak in. Not really crucial for acrylics, because acrylic is a sealant in itself, but your first layer will be very dull, so you're wasting your paint, okay? So I would seal it with a gesso uh, and then go in with your acrylic paint, okay? That's a far more economic way of doing it. Equally, if you want to use something like uh, mount card or matte board to paint on, that needs sealing in some way with a gesso. Okay, straightforward. It doesn't really need primer. It's quite absorbent as it is. So it just needs a coat or two of a good quality gesso. I do not advocate using house paints instead of gesso. Okay, uh, I don't advocate using house paints at all. They are not designed to last they have a high amount of chalk and a low amount of polymer. Okay, so um, the time we're taking and the investment we're giving emotionally, physically, financially, don't skimp on using um, paints that are not designed for artists. I had a student once uh, who did a whole beautiful, beautiful Turner-esque, thick quality, lovely acrylic painting seascape. Huge it was. And I get it. I get the fact that that amount of acrylic paint is expensive. Uh, he used white household emulsion instead of white paint. Within six months, it had fallen off. Okay. But I do know a lot of artists will use uh, household paints as instead of gesso. Same thing as Ladies amongst you, consider this as your underwear. Okay. This is your foundation. It's going to hold everything up. So a good quality gesso on top of this, you could go straight in with paint, acrylic paint, of course you could, but as with the watercolour paper, it's going to soak in and be a bit unsatisfactory until you build up the layers. So sealing it uh, with a gesso is a really useful way of working. You could use matte medium, okay? You could use um, gloss medium, it'll be a bit shiny, but that would certainly work. But I do quite like working on a gesso, it's designed to be a base layer to accept any kind of paint, oil or acrylic. So, um, mount board, watercolour paper, all perfectly fine. These are the two papers I'm currently using in my studio. Uh, and these are specifically for painting on with oil paint. They don't need any treatment at all. So that's one layer of busyness I don't have to do. This is the Arsh Wheel, Arsh Oil Paper. Uh, you can use either side. It's internally sized, um, and, it's, and it's lovely, and it's absorbent, and it will take my oil paint, but it won't degrade. If you paint on a watercolour paper with oil paint that isn't sized specifically for oil paint, that the oils will rot the paper over time, uh, or soak through. So you don't really want that to happen. So this is specifically designed for oil painting, Arsh Wheel. Uh, and a more economic and as equally as good, in my opinion, I've been using it now for the last two or three months, is this one called Fabriano Pittura, and it's designed for acrylics or oil. And I'm using it for oil. Again, it's internally sized. It's thicker. It's 400 grams. You don't get your nice deckled edge, and it's a very different surface, but I work with a lot of thick paint, so the surface isn't really relevant to me. Uh, Equally, they both tear off, or if, if you're doing the thing with masking tape, uh, they both work perfectly well. I use a brand called Frog Delicate Tape, and they're fine with this. Okay, so this is Fabriano Petura, this is Arsh Wheel. There are other papers. I've used Canson Figueres, uh, and one called Tella. All fine, okay. These are the only two that I've found where the surface is still absorbent, it's internally sized. Most 
pa papers you find designed for multimedia, for oil or acrylics, have a surface texture. They've basically been gessoed. Okay, uh, so it, it's whether or not you like that effect. I quite like the fact that these are absorbent. So these are papers, and I will work on paper a lot. Okay, uh, and I then, this was on paper, it's been glued to a panel. Okay, why? Why not go straight on the panel? Well, the reason for that is I quite like working on big bits of paper, freely, loosely, intuitively. Uh, enjoying it, the physicality of working that size, uh, and then I'll probably just chop the whole thing up. Uh, so, for example, this was done one done on the arch wheel, uh, but this actually ended up. This actually was a painting that was six. I got six squares out of one painting. I wasn't happy with it as it was as a whole painting. It wasn't working for me compositionally. So I cut myself a viewfinder, took it for a walk, and I found six nicer compositions. Okay, It just frees it up. I just find it a, 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 an easy way to work. And it means you haven't got lots of panels lying around in your space. A piece of paper takes up a lot less space. Uh, if you are intending going down the gluing down route, there is a blog post I've written about how to attach paper to panels. If you're using oils and you're using paper, then you need to make sure that you're, while you're painting, that your papers are taped to a piece of scrap card, a panel, a piece of plywood, anything. Anything that's going to protect the back of the paper, because if you've got glue on the back, you would never be able to glue it down. It simply won't stick. There's no glue on earth that will be compatible with oil paint or oil and cold wax. Okay? Uh, so those of you who've done my oil and cold wax workshops will understand how that works. Um, and not really a paper, but we're kind of on that, that kind of rain. Uh, and if I'm working larger than 50 centimetres, which is the width of the paper, uh, once you take the tape off, um, or you can buy it in a roll, but a roll of paper, two metres high, whatever it is, has a habit to rip if it gets moved around the studio. Uh, and working on large pieces of paper that could rip is a bit of a risky thing. So I work, if I'm working larger, I work on canvas. And what I will do, I will, I will staple this. Okay, imagine this is a piece of board. I will staple it to a board. Okay, huge board, metre, two metres. Um, and as tight as I can without overly stretching it and I will paint on that and this is the one I've found that I like there's an American one by Fredericks that I like but you used to better get it in the UK and you simply can't get it anymore what you're looking for if that's what you're interested in is a poly cotton not a linen or a 100% cotton, not a duck cotton canvas. You don't want anything. For my work, I don't want anything that is going to have any give. This has no give. Okay, it's like working on a piece of paper. It doesn't stretch. Paper doesn't stretch. Okay, unless you get it wet. This has no give to it. Okay, so I can paint on that nice flat board. I might staple it around the edges. That's what the edge of the canvas looks like. I buy it on a roll. Okay, paint, paint, paint. When I'm done, I take that off and I put it on stretcher bars. Okay, uh, I don't overly stretch it. I pull it tight, but I don't. I don't pull it to death. I don't want my surface to uh, to give in any way. It's it's oil and cold wax. Uh, that would be fine if it was acrylic. Okay, so um, that isn't an issue if I'm painting with acrylic. You could use any canvas, absolutely any canvas, and stretch it afterwards because acrylic is going to have an element of flexibility that the oil and cold wax doesn't. And then I find that, again, the same way. I might do a large painting. I have a large painting currently in my naughty corner in my studio, which is about four foot square. We've had a love-hate relationship. If I can't resolve it, it's being chopped up, okay, and made into some smaller canvases. Uh, I quite like that, the aesthetic of, of cropping, of zooming in, of the found composition. Okay, so that's what's going to happen if that one can't be resolved. I was finding lifting them, moving them, transporting them extremely difficult. Now I can work on canvas, and even if it's oil and cold wax, I can roll that up 
and it's good to go in my car and be driven thousands of miles, unrolled and put on stretcher bars. Okay, so I like canvas. I'm enjoying the canvas journey. Uh, then, of course, there's panels. Okay. You can paint on wood. You can paint on any wood as long as it's sealed in some way. What you don't want is the acids in the wood seeping through. Okay? Uh, it will take a number of years, but it will happen. So you need to seal your wooden panels if they're not already pre-sealed. So this is a plywood one. These are another different type of ply. Uh, this is MDF. You need to seal these with uh, either something called GAC 100, which is a really thin polymer, uh, or a gloss, a good quality gloss medium. Seal them and then gesso. Okay, and then you're good to go. That's fine. You've created a barrier for the acids in the wood. They're not going to leak colours, particularly with the MDF. Uh, they're not going to leak into your paint. MDF is tricky. Some people get scared of MDF. It is carcinogenic. This isn't carcinogenic. If I cut it, the dust is carcinogenic. So don't be tempted to buy a big sheet of MDF and cut it yourself. Get, let the guy in the DIY store or the lumber yard cut it for you, okay? Because it's the glues and the resins that they use to make this product, uh, medium density fiberboard, it's called, uh, that are nasty, okay? They're not particularly good for you. But having that in your studio, someone panicked once and said they had some in the studio, is it going to give them cancer? No, this isn't going to give you cancer. You're fine. Uh, so some of these come, this is an MDF here, this is a Jackson's panel, I like these, they're lovely and stable. This is MDF, but it's got a plywood finish, okay? It's just, just a nice, a nice thing. And some of them come cradled, okay? If you're working on anything, I would say, that's bigger than, say, uh, 10 inches square, all right, 25 centimetres, for example, um, we're fine with this size, I'm fine with this size, if I go much bigger than that with this thickness, which is about half a centimetre, um, maybe a bit more, yeah, it's about six millimetres, you run the risk of it buckling, okay, because you're putting all sorts of waters and paints on here, by the way, I always seal both sides, okay, uh, but you're putting all sorts of waters and paints on here and, and it's gonna, it may soak in and it's going to get maybe damp around the edges. It's going to start to buckle. The same thing applies to plywood. Plywood is lighter, incidentally, than MDF. So unless you're working on very thick pieces of ply or MDF, which get really, I've tried it, they get a bit too heavy to carry around. I wouldn't recommend that. You need a panel, so a 30 centimeter panel. If I'm working on 30 centimeters, you can work on 30 centimeter ply or MDF. I have done it. Uh, I did it as part of Nick Wilton's CVP program, uh, and that's perfectly fine. But a few people, I didn't, but a few people found that their panels were just beginning to warp under all those layers of paint. So you're better off buying a cradle panel, uh, and this is going to support uh, your plywood or your MDF, okay? And there's lots of these available now. They didn't used to be available in the UK uh, easily, but now they are. Okay, these are both sea white panels. The um, retail arm of sea white is called RT Savers. I'll put links for all of this under the video. And these are quite economic. So you buy a pack of three of these and they work out about six or seven pounds each. Uh, and you could buy a pack of three of the 15 centimetres. They go up to 50 centimetres and then they do the A sizes. So you're kind of limited. If I'm wanting to work on a 20 centimetre panel, for example, I would need to then go somewhere like Jackson's. Um, Jackson's do a range. Uh, ones I'm particularly liking are their pre-gessoed ones. I thought I had a smaller one in the studio, I apologise. This is a 40 centimetre and they're really economic because it's a wooden edge and it's MDF, okay, which is cheaper than wood. Uh, and I really like them, even though I know I'm going to be gluing paintings to them and not using them to paint on, you could paint on it. It's gessoed, it's good to go, all right? I still tend to go in with a bit of an extra gesso coat. Some things you buy pre-gessoed could be a little bit slippery, 
but this is okay. These are lovely. They're quite economic. I really like them. And I like particularly the fact that the edges are painted for me and beautifully painted. So what I would do with this, if I'm going to paint on it, I would put tape around my edges to protect the edges. And then when I finish painting, take the tape off and you're good to go. You can hang it as it is, or you could put it in a cradle panel. Uh, this is a smaller one. Okay, again, although I've got it mucky, I'm going to have to go in with some paint. This is one I've glued. I've glued the paper to the Jackson's panel. Okay, they come in different heights, these panels. These are uh, 20 millimeter, I think, 19 or 20 millimeter. Uh, you can get them higher, but of course, you then got to think about your framing. It's got to correlate uh, height wise with whatever you frame them with. Uh, I, and on that note, just to finish off, I tend to use these panels, these uh, floater frames from Jackson's because they fit really nicely with their panels. You get a bit of a border, but not a huge border. Okay, uh, and you can work that out. You can stick it down uh, and you can either screw it or glue it. Uh, and then that, that makes it a much more presentable thing. Some of the large, very large ones, I don't do that. Uh, I would, I certainly frame up my 40s, 50s, 60 centimeters. Uh, if I'm going over 70, I tend to mount them onto uh, deep stretcher bars and just have them what they call gallery wrapped, just hanging on the wall as they are. Otherwise the framing just gets crazy for those prices. Um, those kind of sizes, they just get, it just gets far too much. I think I've covered everything. Uh, um, you can buy pre stretched canvases of course you can walk on those I don't like it because I don't like the bounce I don't like the the resistance uh, and I'm always worried if I scratch in too hard or apply a sander to it that it's going to rip and um, once you've ripped a canvas and it's under tension it's a bit like snagging a pair of tights it's going to just carry on traveling all the way through. So you have to be really careful about things like that.